all security issues and compliance deviations begin with some type of change. That's why Encircle's Configuration Compliance Manager enumerates all the systems on your network, tells you about their detailed configuration, and continuously monitors those assets for changes. Once CCM sees a change, it will then evaluate to determine whether or not the change took the asset out of a compliant state and give you actual information so you can escalate it on up the chain and, and really have the information needed for a successful audit. Configuration Compliance Manager's architecture is very similar to IP360's. In fact, the device profilers that CCM is using to do the monitoring are the very same device profilers that IP360 uses. These device profilers continuously monitor the assets on the network agentlessly. CCM's device profilers report back to a centralized management server, which runs on a Windows platform. The management server is what I think of as the brains behind the operation because it actually determines whether or not the change took the asset out of a compliant state and analyzes to determine the security risk that's associated with it. All this data is then stored in a back-end Microsoft SQL database. The fourth piece to the architecture is the user console. It is used to connect to the management server to utilize the product, schedule reports, and so forth. There's also a web-based dashboard, which is used for asset owners to be able to log in to see the compliance status of their assets and also different network-based metrics. The first thing CCM will do once placed on the network is get a full network inventory. It's going to discover anything from workstations, servers, laptops, switches, routers, firewalls, you name it. Anything with an IP address, CCM is going to discover. Once it discovers the assets, it's going to then drill down into that asset and get granular level of information about it. Things like patch status, the antivirus status, the account on a router or switch, policies on your firewalls. It's going to drill down and get this granular level of information without requiring you to install an agent on that targeted asset. The way Configuration Compliance Manager gets granular level of information about the assets is by utilizing what we call scan modules. As you see, we have a number of different scan modules for all types of of assets and even applications. The scan modules really are what separates CCM from, from other types of products because we gather this detailed information without requiring an agent to be installed on the asset. A scan module really only requires a transport into the asset and a credential for that asset. This list of scan modules is, is constantly being added to, but as you can see, we have a number of different scan modules for your network devices, operating systems, all the way over to the application layer being able to look at the configuration information of your database's web servers, seeing if your, your, your antivirus is not only installed, running, but even up to date. Once Configuration Compliance Manager has discovered the asset and the granular level of information about the asset, it's going to then continuously monitor to detect the changes because all security issues and compliance deviations begin with some type of change, whether that is that antivirus status or the rule set on a firewall an account being added or removed on a router or switch, or the MD5 checksum of a file changing. Any type of structural changes happening to the asset, Configuration Compliance Manager will see and, uh, and record in a back-end database. All these changes lead up to giving you this actual information that you can then use for either your, your audits, running follow-up scans, sending alerts. Once again, giving you this actual information that you can use. It's one thing to provide data, but it's another thing to provide actual information. Now that CCM has detected the change, it will now analyze to determine whether or not the change took the asset out of a compliant state. Encircle's Configuration Compliance Manager has a policy editor with a number of pre-built policies. Anything from CIS, NIST, and Microsoft standards, to external regulatory policies such as PCI, HIPAA, SOX, and even NERC. Compliance is something that is different based on every organization's needs, whether it is following one of these prescriptive policies or because a CISO within a company says all my 2003 servers must look this way. Making sure your assets stay compliant can be achieved by utilizing Configuration Compliance Manager. Within the policy editor, you can build policies based on any technical requirement you have for, for the assets on the network. Policies are very easy to build within Configuration Compliance Manager's policy editor. You can copy and paste rules and tests out of our pre-built policies. You can create your own policies, rules, and tests from scratch. The most common method for creating policies within CCM is by utilizing what we call Create Policy from Asset. This feature allows you to right-click on an asset in a known good state and have CCM automatically create that policy, the rules, and tests that are associated with it. 
Configuration Compliance Manager provides you actionable information so you can start that remediation process. That's why it has web-based dashboards so asset owners can log in and see graphical representations about their assets and about compliance state throughout the network. There are many reports that can be generated within Configuration Compliance Manager. In all reports, you have the ability to have the 50,000-foot executive view or down to the one-foot line item view. All the reports can also be scheduled, and you can automate the process of distributing them to your asset owners. With that, I'm going to now switch over to the demo. Welcome to the Configuration Compliance Manager demo. The first thing you would do once installing CCM is create what is called a network profile. A network profile simply specifies what it is you would like CCM to monitor and which one of the device profilers should do the monitoring. Network profiles can be defined as a CIDR, range of IP addresses, or you can even import a list of IPs that you would like CCM to monitor. In this case, we're using a 10.10.130 network. Once you've created a network profile, you would then click the Start button, and CCM's asset inventory will start to populate as it discovers the assets. From a network perspective, CCM will see things like the host name, IP address, MAC address, NetBIOS group or domain name that the asset is in, the ports that are open or closed, the operating system that is on the asset. Once Configuration Compliance Manager determines the operating system, it will then utilize the scan module to drill down into the asset to get a greater level of information about it. Things like the groups, the users, software installed, services, and of course hotfixes and service packs. Now that CCM has this detailed configuration information, it's going to continuously monitor it for changes. So when I click on this change view, as you can see, there are a number of changes that, that pop up. Anything from new software installed, startup programs, registry keys, database instances, all types of changes. You don't necessarily want to know about all the changes that are taking place to the Atom Center network, like we're showing you for demo purposes. You want to know about the ones that are high risk or take the asset out of a compliance state. CCM measures risk by asset criticality, how important is the asset, times a technical severity level of the change that takes place. Severity levels are pre-populated by best practices, but yet fully configurable. Next piece I want to talk about is compliance. Compliance is different everywhere we go, and that's why Configuration Compliance Manager has a built-in compliance policy editor. As you see, we have a number of different policies that we ship with, anything from external regulatory policies to also internal security policies. These policies are, are really containers which hold rule sets, and the rule sets map back to the standard. The rule sets are containers which hold tests, and we have a number of different tests that are pre-built, and the tests are simply checking the asset to validate that it is compliant or not. Once you have applied a policy to a group of assets or an individual asset, it's very simple to click on the compliance view to really see the state of that asset. You can see the policies that are applied to the asset, drill down into those policies, and see which individual rule sets might have passed or failed, and obviously even which ones maybe don't even apply to the asset. You can then drill down into the rule sets and see the individual tests to determine which ones have passed or failed and drill down into the individual test to see why the asset's not compliant, uh, the, the, the difference between the, the actual and uh, expected results. The last piece I'm going to talk about is reporting. It's one thing to provide a lot of data. It's another thing to provide actual information. CCM has a number of different reports. And the, the beauty about the reports is that it's very flexible for defining not only what it is that you're going to report on, but also things that you might filter in or out of the report. Uh, the the 50,000 foot executive view down to the one foot line item view. And the ability to have your report scheduled and run at certain times. Maybe have a report waiting for you on your desk at 8 a.m. every Monday morning. Uh, once again, CCM is providing you actual information without requiring you to dig through data.